Welcome to the Write the Damn Book Already podcast. My name is Elizabeth Lyons. I'm a five-time author, and I teach people how to write and publish powerful, thought-provoking nonfiction and memoir without overthinking or getting caught up in extreme overwhelm. Because your story and message matter, and it's about to become someone's very favorite resource. For more book writing, publishing, and how the heck do I move through this glitch tips and solutions, and plenty of free resources, visit publishaprofitablebook.com. Hello, hello, and welcome to the first episode of Write the Damn Book Already in 2023. Welcome to the Write the Damn Book Already podcast. My name is Elizabeth Lyons. I'm a five-time author, and I teach people how to write and publish powerful, thought-provoking nonfiction and memoir without overthinking or getting caught up in extreme overwhelm. Because your story and message matter, and it's about to become someone's very favorite resource. For more book writing, publishing, and how the heck do I move through this glitch tips and solutions, and plenty of free resources, visit publishaprofitablebook.com. Hello, hello, and welcome to the first episode of Write the Damn Book Already in 2023. A little bit ago, I dropped my car off for servicing and my service advisor said, like, how's your 2023 going so far? And I was like, Francisco, it's the same as it was in 2022. (laughs) So I don't know. New year, new me is not me. I've not ever really subscribed to that. But as we jump into the new year, it's always fun to think about, for me anyway, how we think about things and why we're doing things the way we're doing things, why we've been doing things the way we've been doing them, especially if they aren't working out exactly as we hoped, expected, anticipated. And one of those areas is publishing. The publishing landscape is changing so much. Some days it's hard to keep up with. And then other days it just kind of feels like a glacier that's moving very, very slowly. It kind of depends what we're talking about, what aspect of publishing we're talking about, what segment of the industry we're talking about. But when it comes to how people are publishing, one of the things I talk about in my new book, my newest book, Write the Damn Book Already, which is now out and available, so go grab your copy, are all the different publishing models. And I realized that the book is titled Write the Damn Book Already, not Publish the Damn Book Already, but in my 18 plus years of doing this and of talking to people about writing and of writing and all those things, one of the most common stopping points for people when they're thinking about writing a book or even when they start writing a book and when they're halfway through the book is they start to think, but wait, what happens next? How will I get this thing published? And then when they start to go down the rabbit hole and do the research and get overwhelmed and terrified, many times they put the whole thing aside because they start to think things like, well, it seems like it's real hard to get a traditional publisher. Or, well, if I self-publish it, number one, how do I even do that? Number two, how do I get it out there? And then all the questions come from there. If I don't, if it doesn't sell well, what does that say about me? What does that mean? And it stops people and it doesn't need to because once we can get really clear about these are the main paradigms when it comes to publishing, these are the main models that you have available to you. And for the record, in my opinion and in my experience, none of them is the best. So they're each the best for a particular author and a particular book. There are plenty of authors out there who have published their books in multiple ways. Maybe they did one traditional, they self-published one, they hybrid published another. And the four main categories, well, there are really three main categories or models of publishing I talk about in write the damn book already. One is traditional, which is the the model that, you know, you go out and sign, you get an agent and they sell the book to Simon and Schuster and blah, all the things happen. The next is independent, which is inclusive of a whole bunch of different things. Hybrid, vanity, small press, indie press. There are all kinds of professional publishing. There are a lot of different names that people put on independent publishing or the various aspects thereof. 
But the one we hear, or the ones we hear about the most are hybrid and vanity, which are used interchangeably, but they're actually, they're similar, but there's a component of them that is extremely different, um, where uh, lots of times authors that go with what I consider to be a vanity publisher end up not pleased. And then there's the third layer, which is self-publishing, or the third model. And to be clear, there are pros and cons to every single one of these models. More and more now, we're hearing about and from authors who have self-published to great success. You know, Hal Elrod and The Miracle Morning, self-published. David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me, not self-published, but hybrid published. Um, author finance published, we could call it. That's what hybrid is. And I'm going to chat about that in a second, a little bit more. And we hear about authors who get signed with big houses and sell very few books. Um, are still working multiple jobs on the side to cover their living expenses, which by the way, perfectly fine. What's the only thing about it that's not fine is the public has an assumption that if you're published by a traditional house, you are rolling in cash and authors sometimes have an expectation that if they're published by a traditional house, they will be rolling in cash when that is absolutely not always. And in fact, you know, rarely the case. So what I think is interesting about self-publishing, self-publishing and even hybrid publishing, if we want to look at it, really the only difference in my mind between self-publishing and hybrid publishing is whether or not the author wants to take on the legwork of doing the things. So when it comes to cover design and in, in most cases, authors will need to find their own editor. There are hybrid publishing houses who have editors available um, or who contract with editors, but even that's not often the case. So beyond editing, when it comes to cover designing and formatting and acquiring an ISBN and writing back cover copy and uploading to the various distribution platforms, it really comes down to do you want to slash are you willing to do those things yourself or would you prefer for one reason or another, maybe it's your schedule, maybe it's your interest in overwhelm, I don't know, to hire that out and to say to a hybrid house, hey, you guys, this is your area. You know what you're doing. You have cover designers. You know how to format. You know how to load. You know how to do all these things. So I'm just going to pay you to do it for me. And I go into more detail in write the damn book already about the subtle nuances between those two and the questions that you want to ask if you're looking to work with a hybrid publisher to make sure that your expectations are properly set from the jump when it comes to royalties and payouts and who owns the listing on the various platforms and how you get changes made down the road to your book if you want to and who owns the rights and all those sorts of things because that's extremely important. One thing that I'm not seeing change as quickly as I wish it would, it's more of the glacier change that I'm seeing, is the perspective on self-publishing. So many people still believe that self-publishing somehow means that their book isn't good enough or they aren't good enough, they aren't popular enough or liked enough, shared enough, clicked on enough, uh, have enough followers to garner a traditional deal. And what I think is really interesting about this is that self-publishing or publishing, I should say, is one of the only spaces I can think of where betting on yourself is seen as lesser. If I want to go start a business tomorrow, if I decide that I want to open a coffee shop slash bookstore, and by the way, I do, and I go and take out a business loan of you know, a six figure business loan in order to do that. And I do the hustle and grind thing and I put my whole heart into it. The people around me for the most part are like, you go, this is incredible. What a leader you are, how brave and courageous. And I'm just, I'm so inspired by you. That is how we look at it most of the time when someone starts their own business. Even if we look at the film and TV industry, when people go and make indie films, there are entire film festivals devoted to independently made films. Aspiring directors and actors and screenwriters get engaged in those things all the time. And 
Rarely does anyone think or say, well, they're just not big enough or good enough for George Lucas or MGM or any of the other big houses. No, we look at their devotion and their dedication and their commitment and their belief in themselves and we celebrate it and we're inspired by it and oftentimes we're motivated by it. But then pull it back to publishing and all of a sudden it changes. And I see constantly in forums online on different social media channels, people saying, don't ever pay to someone else to publish your book. And it it saddens me because the people who are saying that are either A, incredibly misinformed, or B, have had a horrible experience. So that saddens me because I know of a lot of people who have had horrible experiences. My very first experience publishing, my very first book back in 2003 was when I started, I went with a hybrid publisher. I did not have a good experience. That hybrid publisher still exists. So it's not safe to assume that the problem was with them. I truly believe now that the problem was that I did not know what questions to ask and what expectations to have. Now, I'm kind of grateful because it caused me to just pull out and say, you know what, I don't like the way this is working. I want to do this my own way. And now I, I do it that way and my publishing company runs that way. But that's not to say that there is anything wrong with paying to have your book published. It is no different from paying to start your own business. It is no different from going out and and paying to hire the actors and the production crew and whomever else you would hire. I mean, heck, just to have a lifestyle photo shoot or whatever whatever they're called these days, a photo shoot, you you, you, you go and you hire a photographer. You invest in yourself. And very rarely, do I, if ever, do I hear people say, well, I'm going to spend $1,500 for this amazing photo shoot so that I can put these photos up on my website and on social media, but I'm wondering if I'll get the money back. Like, will there be a return on that investment? Because it is considered part of the investment in you. Make no mistake, whether you are self-published, hybrid published, which again, the biggest difference between the two is just who's doing the legwork. That, that's it. And obviously to have someone else do the legwork is going to cost you a little bit more, but you can get the same exact quality self-publishing that you could get with a hybrid. If you're willing to understand what steps to take, what the same steps the hybrid takes and just take them yourself. And if that's something you're interested in, I mean, check out Publish a Profitable Book, which is the first course I created, which walks you exactly step-by-step through the exact steps I take to publish books, not only for myself, but for other people. Because as Finn Phyllis Press, which is my publishing house, I am a hybrid publishing company. So if someone comes to me and and they've got a great product, which is one of the biggest differences between a hybrid and a vanity, a vanity will take anything. I mean, you can send them a manuscript that is 12,000 words, hasn't been edited, is grammatically just a complete disaster. And they'll say, sure, for $10,000, we would love to publish this because they're about the money. They're not about the story. They're not about the author. They're nothing. It's just a money thing. Hybrids are much more particular about what they publish. And so you can't just send them anything. It's not Kinko's. It's not Xerox. Like you can't just send anything off and say, hey, print this for me, please. But if someone comes to me and says, you know, I've written this book and I've had it thoroughly edited and I'm really proud of it and I would love for you to publish, I'll take a look at it and I'll go through these steps if I choose to and and we publish it. But publish a profitable book, the course walks you right through those things. And there are other courses out there, by the way, this isn't just a one hit pitch for publish a profitable book. There are other courses out there that are great that will teach you exactly how to do what you want to do. I just find it so curious that in the world of publishing, we haven't yet flipped that switch more. And I really do believe because no matter who you're published through and what model they're under, you are going to be doing the lion's share of the marketing. And there is no better way in in my, in my thinking to put all your eggs in a basket than to also put your money there. Because in the end, even if 
you know, with many of the hybrid houses, even the, the reputable hybrid houses, there is a particular business model out there that says, we will publish your book for free if we like it. There is that level of vetting that goes on. We will publish your book at our cost and we will split the royalties with you 50-50. There are also some hybrids out there that say, we will publish the book at our cost and you will keep 100% of the profits until you make back your investment which by the way, most people don't do simply because they aren't prepared to go out and market it. And the publishing house, whether traditional hybrid, they are not going to be promoting the book for you. You've got to do that. So whether or not your royalty percentage is 50% or 100% until you make back your investment, there's a little fine print notation in the contract that says that if by such and such a date, and it's usually somewhere around six to 12 months from the date of publication, you have not sold at least, and it's usually between two and 3,000 copies of your book from our website, from the publisher's website, which you have to remember is gonna be at retail cost plus shipping. So it's not, you're not getting an Amazon thing. You're not sending people to Amazon. Then you as the author are required to purchase that number of copies from us at, with our markup, obviously, so they can make money. So in the end, a lot of authors think, oh my God, I'm getting such a great deal. They wanna publish me for free. And then they get a bill for $12,000 a year later. So in essence, that wasn't free. And these are the sorts of, of, of questions to ask when you're on the publishing side. But when you're on the author side, it comes down to you're still making an investment. Even if you're with a traditional house, you're investing your time. You are going to have to invest some money in marketing if you want that thing to sell because you have a very short time period to sell books. That's why pre-orders are such a big thing with traditional houses. That's why people pound the pavement and push the book so hard in the first several weeks because publishers know that's when the majority of your books are going to sell unless you end up with a perennial bestseller like uh, the five second rule or anything by Glennon Doyle or anything by Brene Brown. These things will sell now in perpetuity, but it's the exception, not the rule. So in 2023, I hope that more authors will, even if shakily, because I don't think any of us at, did I, is that a word? Did I just make that up? I don't think any of us who are creative people, uh, whether you're a, a writer, a painter, a singer, it's not often that we are arrogant about, in fact, I, I, I don't know anyone who ever has been, about our work. It's a lot, for a lot of us, it's really easy to sell other people's stuff and it's very challenging to sell our own. It's hard, we have blind spots. We don't see how good our stuff is. And there are other things that come into play too when it comes to, you know, just not being comfortable selling and, and that's a whole separate topic. But we invest in ourselves in so many other areas. We invest in our home. We invest in our appearance. We invest in our businesses. We invest in, I was thinking this morning when I was driving my car, I saw there was a pickup truck or I, I mean, that makes it sound, but it was a, it was obviously a souped up pickup truck because it was $79,000 sitting on the corner of, of this one lot as I was driving in. $79,000. And I thought, Someone's going to walk in there and pay cash for that truck. Or they're going to take out, you know, an $1,100 a month loan to have that truck. That truck doesn't do anything for them besides makes them feel good when they're driving it. And I'm not going to say that's not valuable. I'm simply saying it's interesting to me that without a second thought, we will invest $25,000 in a car, but we aren't sure about investing five or six or $8,000 in the publication, whether we do it ourselves or we hire somebody in the publication and marketing of a book that's a story that we deeply and a message that we deeply believe in. And that could, if we want, and only if we want, leverage our career in a lot of different areas that could lead to a lot of other different opportunities that are lucrative opportunities. Doesn't We don't have to go that route. A lot of people just want to tell their story and that's a beautiful thing. But why are we so averse to that? So I honestly, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too. Please feel free to um, look Instagram. I'm Elizabeth at Elizabeth Lyons author. 
My email is elizabeth at elizabethlyons.com. Please feel free to send me an email. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, um, both personally and you know, from a higher level for those of you who are also observing this in different areas, because I love to have new perspectives sent my way, just as everyone else does. So I encourage you to maybe think about perhaps maybe thinking about it a little differently in 2023. And wherever you are in the world and in life at this point in time, I hope everything is going incredibly well. Uh, whether it's new year, new you or not, I look forward to getting to know you better this year. I look forward to hearing from you. This is a conversation. It doesn't feel like that all the time because I'm the one talking and you're the one listening, but now I'm here to listen. So I hope you'll reach out and we can continue the conversation further. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, this is your friendly reminder to follow or subscribe, leave a quick review, and share it with someone you know has a great story or message, but isn't sure what to do next. Also, remember to check out publishaprofitablebook.com for book writing resources and tips, and to see all the ways we can work together to get your book out into the world. Again, thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk with you again soon.